Good afternoon, everyone. Let me take this particular opportunity to welcome you to today's class. In, uh, in today's class, what I want us to talk about is basically sound. And on sound, like I told you last week, there are particular things that I would want us to have in mind. And this is because all our unit is basically based on sound. All other things actually come as an addition to the main element that we are discussing or that we shall be able to discuss all along. That's on sound. Now, sound. Well, basically, type uh, is uh, end disturbance. that is created, that is on, that is with environment. That the moment we have pressure that is created at a given point in time, <clears throat> these pressure waves actually disturb the air and these particular disturbances is, is, is actually what causes sound. Now, look at a scenario where you have a balloon and that particular balloon is actually inflated with a, a pin uh, as, 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 as when it's actually filled up with air. The moment you inflate that particular balloon, what you do expect is that you will be able to have a pass. In that particular pass, there was a clear, calm environment. But that with that, but with, with that particular inflation, that particular uh, uh, point where you break that particular balloon, the difference between the molecules of the air inside the balloon and those ones that are outside is quite different. And that particular difference into the outer environment is actually the disturbance now that you're saying that ends up now uh, creating that particular sound. Now, sound travels on air from one particular molecule and is actually passed across to another molecule all along until that particular sound energy ends. The moment it diminishes, then that particular sound goes mute, and that's when we say there's no sound. So what it means basically, therefore, is that the closer you are to the sound source, the louder that particular sound will be. And if it's going to be louder, then as you go out away from the sound source, that particular sound is likely to dim, not because it's not there, but because the transfer of sound energy from one molecule to the other actually is, I mean, um, loses a lot of energy. And it, the moment it keeps on losing that particular energy, then it's likely that at the end of the day, it's going to uh, go down. Now, <clears throat> sorry. Now, when we talk about sound traveling through the air, then remember back on what we did discuss about the studio. We said for you to be able to have a good sound recording studio, you have to look into the various designs and acoustic treatment that you can be able to give that particular studio so that it can be able to give you quality sound recording. How does that happen? One thing that you need to have in mind is that sound does not travel in a vacuum. Sound only travels where there is matter. If there is no matter, then that particular sound is not going to travel. So what will happen is if you build a studio and that particular studio has a nice vacuum all around, it's likely that sound from inside that particular studio is never going to go outside. And sound from outside, it's never going to go into that particular studio. That is one of the fundamental things that you need to be able to think about when you're designing a studio. Number two, you need to be able to understand that sound travels in different speeds in different matter in different matters 
For example, the way sound travels on wood is quite different from the way it will be able to travel on rubber. It will be quite different from the way it will be able to travel on metals. So these are other things that you need to be able to understand so that it, it, it comes into your mind that when you are about to record or when you are designing and constructing a studio, what particular materials will you be able to make use of or what kind of materials do you need for you to be able to put up a very good studio for the purpose of uh, sound recording. Another thing that you need to be able to look at is the kind of materials that you're going to use. For example, when you talk about studio acoustics, you need to be able to have uh, woolen materials, you need to be able to have cotton materials, or you need to be able to have at least SISO material. The materials that you need to be able to have <clears throat> mean you need to be able to avoid here are actually materials like um, nylon. Nylon, <coughs> sorry, nylon in one way it's actually shy, uh, shiny, meaning at one particular point it's going to reflect back the sound. And two, nylon when it's actually subjected to um, heat energy that can emanate from your body or that can emanate from the lights that you'll be using in the studio is likely to develop and uh, create static energy. That static energy is going to create sparks and that's going to interfere with your microphone. So these are things that you need to be able to have in mind, understand them, then know how can you be able to uh, 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 make use of them, you can the right quality of sound for production. So once you have understood what sound is and how it works and how it travels, the next thing that you need to be able to understand is basic. And you are currently the only person that, in this conference. And it's going to be possible. Then what's likely to happen at that particular point in time is that it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, to capture. Now, once you have captured that, 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 that particular audio in its raw, uh, uh, Form at under production. You're going to take. You're going to take it to the next level. That's uh, post production. Now post production basically means that which you gather or that.
which you recorded is going to be um, ed edited. It's going to be uh, manipulated in one way or the other. So when people have now finished that you to take and, to, and if it's not to the things like that, then it can be asynchronous with the visuals in the TV preliminary so that it can be able now to make it product that will be taken out for consumption. Now under the production, let me take you through them. And the product and ideas board that may be set together producers, they will uh, get themselves in a discussion. Sometimes they can do research, sometimes they can be put with your with their friends, sometimes it can be as a result of them personal experiences or other people's experiences. So it can have a kind of observations that people may and when you make these observations, you other people what other people are doing out of your personal experience. An idea would be born. An idea would be me talk about religion. An idea would be like an idea like um, education. An idea would be uh, diseases. An idea would be like uh, poverty. An idea like uh, politics. So once that particular idea is born, then the next thing is that you're, you're, you're supposed to be doing is basically to change that particular idea into a story. That's when we move into plan of action. What 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 is this particular topic I've decided? Then a plan of action is worked out. Here the format of the program is actually determined whether the program is, is going to be a talk, it's going to be a discussion, it's going to be a drama, it's going to be a documentary. That is the format of that particular program. And and radio has different formats that you can people to 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 actually develop. So once that is clear and you have made a decision, I want to work on it as a documentary or as a feature or as a drama or as, a, as an interview, the right person for writing the script then and the performance has decided. We, we, this is where you realize now uh, the importance of scripting. And uh, in semester four, you actually did uh, discuss about scripting for radio and scripting for TV. And you know what it entails for you to be able to come up with a good script. Once you have uh, identified these particular individuals, then the script is going to be developed. Then the next thing to happen is you, know, you need to commit these people, the script writer, the talent, the presenters. And um, once you, you, you commit to them, then uh, you start now working on rehearsals. Sometimes rehearsals might be there, sometimes might, they might not be there. Sometimes, you know, they might be vigorous, sometimes they might not be. Because it all depends on the form of the form. It all depends on the, 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 um, how you want your production to come out. Once you have made a decision on that, then the next thing, Now the next stage that you take the process is actually on production, and that this is the actual process of recording that radio program. So proper studios have and uh, would make up for that as uh, the required for the recording. Of the program, once you record that program that we captured by the microphone uh, from the talent and the piece, then the next level that you take it to is actually post production. And post production, what's going to happen there is you're going to uh, uh, create a, a, a review of that particular program from the beginning to the end. You're going to ensure that uh, sound is going to ensure that uh, the equality of sound, you're going to ensure everything is considered and taken into the direct as per the of that program. That's basically the process that uh, a program through a radio program. And, and once you take it, then you know where do you come in, you use a radio editor, and uh, when do you sit on that particular stage. Now, what are these, what are the means that one needs in order to be able to come up with a radio production? Now, you need to be able to understand that for you to be able to have a given format of a radio program, the particular ingredients that you need to be able to have. One is actually the human voice. I don't think there will be a program that will need a cow's voice. I don't think we need, but what will happen is 
the human voice is actually very key and very important and we'll be able to make use of it from the beginning or most to all the way to the end. The next thing or the next element or ingredient that we actually need is actually music. Music is very key because it will be able to entertain, it will be able to connect, it will be able to attract the audience, it will be able to do all manner of things so that your program can be as much as entertaining and much uh, emotional, emotionally evoking the, the audience in one way or the other. Because for you to be able to stick with the audience from the beginning to the end, you need to be able to attach yourself with the audience in a very emotional way, you are either with a bad emotion or a happy emotion. That will be dependent on what will be the format of the program and uh, what will be the desire and um, um, the, 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 the objectives that you actually intend to be able to achieve. And uh, lastly, number three, you need to be able to understand that you need sound effects and uh, sound effects will be there. They will be able to help you in one way or the other. And uh, um, that, 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 that determines. The credibility of that particular program because we need sound these sound effects in end radio can the one in sense way we can be able to see where but there's a way we can be able to engage exactly where you are. How does that it's all about sound effects? If you have to have the parts you mean at the background, then you know probably you're outside. You want to have a uh, you know uh, a loss, we able to know probably where you are, you're close to the road. If you will be where we will be able to hear uh, voices of other people uh, talking and discussing, you know, we might be able to estimate that probably you are in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a restaurant. These, these sound effects are the ones that can be able to give us the sense of location because we cannot be able to see, but we can be able to create a, an imagery of exactly where you are out of these sound effects. It, 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 it also adds realism to that particular program. In, in, in the imagination of the listener. So you need not to forget that sound effects are very key, they are very important in any particular production. That you actually, so uh, you need to be able to look, uh, you get to that uh, music sort of radio, it's actually, uh, the soul. So it's it's basically the soul of radio. It's used in different ways on radio, and um, as as we have already talked about, and uh, we had to realize that even when it comes to uh, visual. Uh, media, that's film and TV, they, 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 they basically um, create a lot of uh, connection with the audience. That a particular song will give a, 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 a given emotion and this particular emotion is what is going to connect with uh, the audience uh, and, and, and the characters. So you need not to forget that this, the music is very key Music is very key uh, because it will be able to add color and life to a spoken word program. Uh, music can break that particular monotony. That's why you hear this, I mean, presenters every time that they are presented a program or something for the next two, three, five minutes. The next thing that they think of is actually to 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 break that way with a, a song or so. And um, that 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 is meant to be able to break monotony. Music is, 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 is actually used to give a uh, desired effect of happiness, uh, uh, fear, joy. That, that, that's what happens. It, it creates the emotions in, 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 in uh, the audience, as well as even with the people who are on the production. And uh, do not forget that music can also suggest scenes and locations. For example, 
example, if you have to create a brighter early morning situation, this can be done by playing a pleasing note on the flute along with the sound of uh, chirping pads. That tells you it, it's morning. It's morning. And that's why you, you, you many times get to listen to radio. In the, the kind of music that they play in the morning is quite different from the kind of music that they will be able to play in the afternoon. And it will be quite different from the kind of music that they will be able to play late in the evening. That tells you it gives it gives uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the feelings, you know, it creates uh, an imagination of whether this is uh, morning, this is the afternoon, this is in the evening, and, and, and all those uh, come as a result of the kind of music that you will be able to play. Now, up to that particular point, I would want to believe and I would want to hope uh, that I will express myself in relation to sound. When you're going to listen to this particular recording, listen to it keenly and go back and look at the notes that I've actually uploaded on the, uh, the, the, the Moodle. And um, compare notes. If you find there is a question that you'd want us to delve on, do not hesitate to, to communicate to me. I'll be able to answer that as it comes. So take your time, enjoy yourself, and be blessed. <laughs>